Just northwest of Los Angeles sits Naval Base Ventura County, home to a huge mobilization force, the Navy's construction elite, the Seabees. Since World War II, the Seabees have paved roads and built bases around the world. Navy Seabees are well known for being part of the fight. But tonight, they'll have to sit back and watch, cheering on their services boxers in this year's Armed Forces Boxing Championship. I'm Van Stokes here with Tom Lavacek ringside at the 2010 Armed Forces Boxing Championship at Naval Base Ventura County, California, where tonight two services will battle it out for gold in the 152-pound weight class. Next, we'll bring you highlights of the preliminaries, plus all the action in the championship bouts. Tom, let's take a look at the rules that will be in effect tonight. We'll be using a computerized scoring system. Three rounds of boxing consisting of three minutes of each round. That's both in the preliminaries and in the finals. Legal scoring blows. They're scored when the white part or the knuckle part of the glove forcefully strikes the head or body of their opponent. Fouls. The common fouls are slapping, holding, holding and hitting, or pushing. The fouls lead to cautions. Cautions lead to warnings. And three warnings result in a disqualification. The referee. His number one responsibility is the safety of the boxer. He can stop the bout because the boxer is injured, bleeding, or one boxer has a superior lead over his opponent. Tom, thank you very much for that explanation. Now that we understand the rules, let's get to the action in the prelims, where in the first bout, Army National Guardsman Samuel Vasquez from Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania, takes on the Marine Corps' Angel Garcia of Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Vasquez is in the black trunks. Garcia's wearing blue trunks. And right away, you see Garcia taking the action to Vasquez in the corner. A lot of punching, counter-punching, nice aggressions early on, Tom. And uh, I talked to both coaches uh, prior, prior to coming to this championship, and both of them said they have lots of experience. Uh, once again, 20 years' experience between the two of them, and both of them are in shape. They will come at you all three rounds, as you can see right here. Well, Garcia trying to come at Vasquez right now. Vasquez has the red gloves, black trunks, Army gold up top, trying to find a home, taking the action right now to Angel Garcia. And Angel Garcia is backing out and says, you didn't even hit me. That's okay, but Vasquez is probably saying to himself, I may not have hit you that time, but you know what? I'm coming at you again. And that he does, a quick left, and he jumps back. Round number one is where most of the action took place in this particular bout, Tom. You see the attack by Angel Garcia trying to tabulate some points right now. Oh, and a quick left. Down goes Garcia. Take a look at this again, Tom. See how he sets it up. Boom, and the quick left. Garcia didn't get it. see it coming. He goes down to the canvas. There's the look. Wow, Boom. there's that. What a solid shot right to the jaw of Angel Garcia. That's about as solid as you can get it, and the referee moves in to start the count. There's a quick close-up. The jab, Boom. and then the left, and down goes Garcia. So Garcia, help to his feet. Moves back to his corner with the ringside position. Well, it's all about safety in amateur boxing as the referee stops that contest. When we return, it's the Air Force against the Navy in the next preliminary about. Which service will advance to the finals? We'll find out next. Welcome back to the Armed Forces Boxing Championship at Naval Base Ventura County, California. We just saw Army Samuel 
Vasquez knock out Marine Angel Garcia in two minutes into the first round of the first 152 pound preliminary bout. Now we head to the second preliminary in this weight class. Navy boxer Antonel Cruz Padilla of Bayamont, Puerto Rico faces off against airman Jose Gonzalez, who hails from Fairfax, Virginia. Let's recap the highlights. Padilla trying to find a quick home with the left hand and Gonzalez responding naturally. Nice flurry here deep into this round one. Now Padilla won the first round by the score of 10 to three, but it was Gonzalez who came back in the second round by the score of eight to seven. Padilla very much trying to turn the tide in his favor here in round number three. A lot of infighting. I see some backhanding too. But our ring official lets it go. And again, good flurry right now by Antonel Padilla of the United States Navy. And you hear that crowd, that, that hometown crowd, if you will, that Navy crowd behind him. They're doing all they can to support him. We have 45 seconds remaining in this round three of this welterweight contest. That's 152 pounds. And nice flurry by Antonel Padilla. Padilla really has an advantage here because he's got a height advantage and he's got a long arm advantage over the Air Force boxer Jose Gonzalez. That he does. Well, Padilla backs away. He probably figures he might have a little bit of a cushion here in round number three. They dip down under 15 seconds remaining. Gonzalez trying to reach down, but you see both boxers a little bit tired. Well, they hang on. And Padilla wins this welterweight preliminary. Tom, you can't ask for a whole lot more. A lot of power out of Padilla up front in the first round. Padilla comes back in the third round and really gives the convincing margin. That was, that was one of the determinations to win that bout. I, uh, uh, was, I was really impressed with that. So, again, it'll be interesting to see how they match up in the finals. Well, we will have that opportunity because it's official. The Army's Samuel Vasquez and the Navy's Antonel Cruz Padilla face off in the finals. Both of these talented athletes prove why they're here tonight. Our first competitor is a Calvary Scout from Monessen, Pennsylvania. National Guardsman Samuel Vasquez looks back at the knockdown he forced in the preliminaries. <laughs> I'm gonna wear him down. Wear him down until he can't punch no more. I got I started boxing when I was nine. It was because I got picked on. I was uh, the 2007 bronze medalist, Pals, National Pals bronze medalist. 2008 state, Pennsylvania State Golden Glove champion, National Golden Glove runner up, ringside uh, silver medalist. In 2009, I fought in San Antonio, Texas for the Foul Nationals, and I got the bronze medal at 165. What was your game plan going in tonight with that great shot right there? And I started getting tagged a little bit, started getting hit. And uh, once that happened, I realized I needed to start, you know, getting some points here. And I realized that every time he threw his right hand, he was open for, for, for a straight left, overhand left, you know, left hook. And uh, I took advantage of it. And then as soon as I threw it, I mean, it was, it was just perfect. And just, that was it. <laughs> My strategy for him, I noticed he's a taller guy. I believe he's like 6'2". Um, inside work, you know, tall guys, you got to go inside, you got to keep them inside. That way they can't use their reach, you know, to gain points on you. And uh, I'm going to wear him down. Wear him down until he can't punch no more. <laughs> Vasquez faces off against Sailor Antonel Cruz Padilla. Here's a day in the life of this hospital corpsman from Puerto Rico. I want to be a champion. I want to call myself champion. It's always an angle that you got to work on. And uh, that motivates me to do the same for my command, for my sailors. First round, I felt great. Eventually, uh, I, was, I felt like I started doing his fight. It was uh, pressuring me. And uh, I could handle the situation a lot better. My main thing is uh, you just uh, remember what the callers say and execute. 
a word for the doctors. Make glasses, dispense contact lenses, glasses, mostly for air crew, special operations, pilots. And Mary two kids. It was very challenging for working, going to the gym, come back at eight o'clock at night, three times a week. Uh, so I went to a box, a couple of tournaments here and there. I win the uh, junior gun, the gloves. Uh, that felt great. I start building my confidence. Next thing you know, I'm 9-0. Everything can be done. No matter how old are you. No matter what's the, what the limitation, the struggles you got in your life, you gotta pace yourself, be in the right place, do the right thing, and eventually it's gonna be good. You can make it happen. Vasquez has been boxing for 14 years, Padilla only for two. Who will take home the gold, Army or the Navy? Stay tuned to find out. This is it. The championship bout in the 152-pound weight class, the welterweights. The Army's Samuel Vasquez and the Navy's Antonel Cruz Padilla face off in the finals. Now, let's turn it over to ring announcer Castle Chalice as the final bout gets underway. Folks, making your way to the red corner, representing the United States Army, he is a cavalry scout from Manessa, Pennsylvania. He's now stationed at Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania, weighing in at 152 fighting fit pounds. He's the bronze medalist at the 2007 and 2009 National Pals. Let's hear it for specialist Samuel, the Caucasian Persuasion Vasquez. And making his way to the blue corner, he represents your own, the United States Navy. He's a hospital corpsman from Bayamon, Puerto Rico. Now stationed at Naval Hospital, Oak Harbor, weighing in at 152 pounds. He's the 2009 Washington State Junior Golden Gloves Champion. Let's hear it for a second class Petty Officer Antonel Cruz Padilla. And there's a good look at Padilla as he greets his hometown crowd. Again, a Navy crowd. Padilla representing the United States Navy. They get their final instructions from our referee. The bad news about Padilla is he only got two years of boxing experience. The good news about Padilla is everybody in that in that fitness center is rooting for him today. Well, I think he, I think a boxer can feel that, Tom. When he's got that crowd behind him, we'll call it the fourth man in the ring, whatever you want to call it, but when they get behind their boxer, I really believe that boxer can feel the energy coming from the crowd. So let's see if Padilla can pick up on that as we get set for the action here in this championship welterweight bout. Warfield Gymnasium and the crowd, I guarantee you, they're ready. They're waiting for this bout. Another Navy boxer can possibly win a gold medal. And if you're a boxer, you got to stand by for the music. You can almost hear the music. It's called the bell. It signifies the start. It's one of the sweet sounds of the sport of boxing. Okay, underway. Vasquez in the oh, goal. Oh, automatically picks up a standing eight count. Right off the bat. Boom. Right off the bat. And again, both those boxers, they're ready to go again. So the referee lets them box. So they're back at it. No damage done on the eight count. In fact, there's no... Oh. In comes, in comes Vasquez. Taking it hard, Padilla responds somewhat to the body, but you see Vasquez, he's trying right now to cut the ring down on his opponent, Antonel Padilla. But again, Tom, as I was saying, that eight count, even though your boxer gets an eight count, it only counts as really one scoring blow. That's right, one scoring blow. Now, the, the way they work those are if they get three in one round or four in the in the bout, that that bout is 
referee will stop that contest at that point in time. As you say, three eight counts in one round or four overall. Vasquez very much on the attack right now, trying to cut the ring down on Padilla. Ooh, lands some hard blows over against the rope. Padilla definitely steps out to the center of the ring. Both boxers are trying to adjust to each other and, and make adjustments. Tom, who's the aggressor right now? Who do you see as the aggressor, even, even though Vasquez has a 2 to nothing lead? Uh, I, I see Samuel Vasquez as the aggressor right now. Although he's already, he's hit the canvas once, though. He has, but you take a look at the back pedals, too. Take a look at the back pedals. And who's moving forward and who's moving back? Two-point difference at this point here in round number one. Not a significant, not a big difference. Can be overcome very quickly, or the margin can be lengthened. As we move down to the one-minute mark here in this first round, Vasquez sends Padilla into the ropes and then literally cuts the ring off of him again. Oh, now, now Vasquez lands a home. Now it's Vasquez delivering an eight count to Antonel Padilla. Padilla does have that long reach, but once again, Vasquez is getting underneath that, that, that artillery that he's throwing out at him, and he's doing it effectively. That he is, and he has taken, as we approach the 30-second mark here in the first round, Vasquez has taken a five-to-zip lead in terms of scoring blows over Padilla. So he's been the better, he's been the one that's done a better job of adjusting to his opponent. Yeah, now interestingly enough, we've seen an eight count given to each boxer thus far in this bout. But again, safety is the name of the game when you're the third man in the ring. We dip under 10, five seconds remaining in the first round. And Padilla covering nicely. Refuses to let any more scoring blows land from the gloves of Vasquez as both boxers retire to the corners. We get a look at what their instructions are. You see the boxing coach from the Army. Get behind your jabs. Army boxing coach Abdullah says relax, stay under control. And let's see if Vasquez can get this done in the second period. Again, he took a five to nothing lead after the first round here in the second stanza. If you're Vasquez and your coach Abdullah, you want to see him lengthen that, if at all possible. So under control comes Vasquez. Oh, nice flurry. Good set of body punches. Down low, up to the head. Padilla on the retreat. And Padilla finally scores. He's finally on the scoreboard. He scores two points there. He scored them off the counter shots, Tom. Vasquez mounted the attack, but it was Padilla on the counters that scored the points. Right now, we're learning that he is a counter puncher. That we are. As he right now becomes the aggressor trying to push Vasquez in the corner. Nice jab. Nice one, two. Referee is saying, keep your head up. Keep your head up, Padilla. Well, both boxers have responsibility to present themselves to their opponents. Yeah, you have to cover. Yeah, you have to have defense and an offense, but you have to present yourself. Now, Padilla into the corner. Vasquez laying it on. He takes a 7-3 lead at this particular point, and deftly out of the corner steps Antonel Padilla back to the center of the ring. That's where he has his chances, Tom, out in the center, not in the corner or against the ropes. And that's also a great place for the judges, the five judges at ringside. Uh, to see those scoring blows. They can't do it in the corners. Somebody's going to be screened out. Good point. And you can't see the infighting either. So when you have space between the two boxers, judges can see the scoring blows land as they just saw one there from Samuel Vasquez. He goes to 9-3 to three right now. This round, half over. Each of the rounds, three minutes. Each bout, three rounds. What I'm seeing here is I'm seeing Samuel Vasquez score on many different combinations. He can mix it up. He is, and you know what? He's turning up the steam just a little bit right now. He knows that he's got Padilla a little bit on the run, Tom. He mounts an 11-3 lead right now. Oh, Padilla response. But you know what? Vasquez, not only can he take it, he can also dish it out. Well, what we talked about earlier is the experience factor. Samuel Vasquez has 14 years of experience where... And Antonel Padilla has two years of experience, and it's showing right here. Yeah, great point, Tom. That's absolutely a great point. You're seeing the experience of Vasquez over the younger Padilla. But credit Padilla, he's hanging in there and standing tall, as tall as he can, I should say, 
against the veteran Samuel Vasquez of the United States Army. Padilla, though, pushed back over towards the corner against the ropes. But if you're Vasquez, you want to get him there, land those body blows, and then look for the uppercut that you just saw. He was unable to land it, but nonetheless, that's his game plan. As we dip to 10 seconds remaining in this, the second round. Yep. Vasquez is staying close and not, not allowing to score. As round number two comes to a close, Samuel Vasquez has now mounted a 15 to four lead by winning the second round by the score of 10 to four. Now, see if we can't figure out, or at least give a listen to what Padilla is being told by his coach. Yeah, he, they want to make sure they hear each other, Tom, so they kind of lean in to capture the attention of the other. And Tom, you see Coach Abdullah Bashir, he's the head of the Army boxing team, arguably, if not the best, certainly one of the best amateur boxing coaches in America. And he has taken this program and taken it to national prominence. He's taken it to another height. And the other thing is he has worked two Olympics, man. So that he, he has. is a he's talented. He's a former, a former Olympic coach. Great call, Tom. All right, we're set for round number three. Referee says stools out of the corner. He waits until everything's set. And he says box. Once again, Antonel Padilla in the blue from the Navy. From the Naval Hospital in Oak Harbor, Washington. Trying to mount an attack right now against Samuel Vasquez of the Army in the gold and black. Padilla just has to make a little bit better use of that long reach that he has. Man. But remember, he started this third round behind in points 15 to 4. That's a big gap to try to make up. You can hear the crowd. I just they hollered out, they're telling him, use your reach, use your reach. But again, Gwes. Vasquez is staying in close, in tight. A lot of good infighting, and you saw the uppercuts just now. If Vasquez can get in, work the body, get the hands down a little bit of Padilla, then he can perhaps go with the uppercut. There it is, a quick uppercut on the left side, and the score goes up to 20-6 to six right now. Okay, both boxers are still on their toes. I don't, I don't see that fatigue setting in yet. This round is half over, Tom. Round three, and if... If you've been in that ring for a total of nine minutes, three three-minute rounds, you think, oh, you can do that for nine minutes. But guess what? That is a war. That's why they call these military boxers warriors in the ring. It's another great right hand by Samuel Vasquez. Scoring another point. 21 to 6, though, right now by Vasquez. Padilla would have more than his work cut out for him. In fact, he would have to literally put Vasquez away with a solid punch. But you see the eight count right now given to Padilla. That's the second of the contest. Once again, Samuel Vasquez, another one, has solid blows, solid landing scoring punches. Both boxers sensing that this one is I don't want to say nearly over, but we're to the 32nd mark remaining. And there, and there's another eight count. And that's another eight count. He's going to send him to the corner, and that's it. Tom, the referee stepped in. He saw the blood coming out of the nose of Padilla. Wisely, he sent him to his corner. Uh, that's absolutely right. The referee knows that there is no way that he's going to win this bout, and so he stops the bout. Well, let's go to Castle Chalice for the official call. Folks, let's give a big round of applause to these two game warriors tonight. That's what we came to see, some all-action boxing here at the 2010 Armed Forces Championship. We do have a winner. The referee stopped the contest in favor of your United States Army out of the red corner, Samuel Vasquez. And you can see the medals being draped around each of their necks right now. The gold around Samuel Vasquez's neck. And then Antel, Antonel Padilla, he gets the silver medal top.
Samuel, it seems like uh, that all-out aggression of yours uh, saved the day for you. Uh, not like you needed saving, but it just seemed to come through for you. Every time you needed something, your natural aggression came out and pulled it out for you. What do you attribute that to? Uh, the hard work and dedication that I've been through these past this past month from the Army. I mean, it was intense, and uh, that was the most that I fired punch in a lot of fights. <laughs> uh, that was a cracking left hook there, the one that ended it all, or a left overhand, rather. Uh, did you plan to set that up, or did you just see an opening and went for it? Uh, I think after further in the rounds, his, his hands started going lower and lower, and uh, I knew that sooner or later I was going to catch him with it because his hands kept on getting lower, So, and I planned it and I threw it. Well, you certainly laid him into it, and uh, we congratulate you again. It was a wonderful performance. Congratulations on the championship. Thank you very much. So the judges declare Vasquez the winner on that cracking left hook. But as we saw, this bout ended early. It was an RSC, Tom. Referee stopped the contest. Let's go back to Castle Chalice for an explanation now. Tell us what happened tonight with that RSC stoppage, will you? Well, it was frankly a case where one boxer was clearly better than the other. And so what we have is compassion for the boxer. Although he wasn't really hurt in the bout, um, he was taking a lot of punishment, and, and it was clear that it was a one-sided bout, and so the referee chose to stop. I think it was a very good call. So, nice explanation by head official Doug Emery. Let's recap it, Tom. Vasquez takes the gold for the Army in the 152-pound weight class. Let's take a look at the bout card for next week's show. We have two finals in the 108 and 114-pound weight classes. Until then, we want to hear from you. Tell us which sports you want to see covered on the Pentagon Channel. Email us at sports at Pentagon Channel dot mil. I'm Van Stokes. And I'm Tom Lavacher. See you next time on TPC Sports Coverage of the 2010 Armed Forces Boxing Championship. Good night, everyone.